The carnivorous species of this order are jawless parasites that slurp the life out of their victims with their terrifying, razor-sharp, tooth-ringed mouths. Most people, and certainly all fish, would flee in horror at the sight of this sucker. That is, unless you're in Latvia, where it's considered a local delicacy and costs four times more than beef. This is the lamprey. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault and you're watching Animal Logic. Lamprey are an order of about 40 species of ancient vertebrates called petromyzontiforms. 18 of those species are carnivorous, parasitic, and here to give you chupacabra vibes. Lamprey are sometimes inaccurately called lamprey eels because of their resemblance. While eels are elongated bony fish, Lamprey skeletons are made out of cartilage, actually making them more similar to sharks than to eels. And even though they are slippery as eels, thanks to their lack of scales, eels, these vampire wannabes, are not. The Atlantic sea lamprey is one such carnivorous species and is an invasive one to boot. Great efforts are taken to eliminate it, but since the lamprey has stayed roughly the same for the past 340 million years and survived four major extinction events, this slippery fish is certainly in it to win it. 2021 marks the 100th anniversary of the Atlantic sea lamprey invading the upper North American Great Lakes. While Atlantic sea lamprey are native to Lake Ontario, the final lake in the chain of Great Lakes which serves as the outlet to the Atlantic Ocean via the St. Lawrence River, it wasn't until relatively recently that they gained access to the rest of the Great Lakes. Niagara Falls acted as a natural barrier, keeping the Atlantic sea lamprey from accessing lakes Erie, Huron, Michigan, and Superior. It wasn't until 1921 that they were first spotted in Lake Erie, two years after the man-made Welland Canal, which bypasses Niagara Falls, was deepened. By 1938, they were running loose in all the remaining Great Lakes, as well as many other connected bodies of water. To feed, the Atlantic sea lamprey and other carnivorous species suction themselves onto their victims with their sharp, horn-like teeth that encircle their jawless mouths. Once attached, they use their pointed tongues to bore through the fish's scales and flesh, a process that is terrifyingly called rasping. Once latched on, they suck the blood and other bodily fluids from their prey. Anticoagulant enzymes make sure that the helpless victim's blood doesn't clot and stop the suck fest. Creatures that drink blood are known as hematophagus. This includes creepy crawly pests like mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, bedbugs, and leeches, which also use anticoagulants to keep their prey's blood flowing. Ooh, oh, he's biting. I can feel his teeth digging into my elbow. Other hematophagous animals include the vampire bat, the red-tailed oxpecker, and the vampire finch. Check out our vampire episode after this if you're in the market for extra chills. In the larval stage of their lives, lamprey are known as ammocetes and are, by contrast, harmless as lambs. The five-inch long amocetes bury into the beds of streams and filter feed on algae and other microorganisms. They'll stay this way for about four years or even longer for non-carnivorous species. Then they turn into transformers. No, really, that's what the juveniles are called. They just look like smaller versions of their adult selves at this point. By the following summer, carnivorous lamprey transformers become full-blown adults. And that's when the feeding frenzy begins. Sea lampreys feed on all types of fish, including trout, salmon, whitefish, yellow perch, walleye, catfish, and sturgeon. In their OG ocean home, Atlantic sea lamprey do not typically kill the fish they feed on, thanks to coevolution. Without this coevolution in the Great Lakes, however, sea lampreys have a 40 to 60% kill rate. 
Each of these bloodsuckers can kill up to 40 pounds of fish during their 12 to 18 month feeding period. Then the adults spawn and die shortly after, leaving the next generation to pick up the torch of decimation. Controlling lamprey populations in the Great Lakes takes a serious team effort. The Great Lakes Fishery Commission, in cooperation with Fisheries and Oceans Canada, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers all work together to keep lamprey populations down. They do this in a few ways, by treating infected streams with lampricide, which kills the lamprey amicete while having little to no impact on other fish and wildlife, with barriers to block the paths of spawning adults and by tricking their keen senses of smell with pheromones to attract and trap them. This fish might seem like a horror movie monster, but it's worth repeating that not all lampreys are terrifying bloodsuckers with nightmare holes for mouths. The non-carnivorous species, for example, don't feed at all. Instead, they live on the reserves they've stockpiled during their larval phase, spawning and dying within six to 10 months of their transformation into adults. Now we can all sleep soundly and nightmare free tonight. So what should I talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching, see ya.